shut and I can hear. Okay, just like doing timing on your car, I did uh, the B bank first, then did the A bank, and then realized now that we're done that the B bank is three teeth off. So the B bank is almost completely disassembled now. We have to pull out the camshaft section, a dummy piece, a gear, and then um, this support piece for the gear. And move it three teeth and put it all back together. This project means a lot to me because it ended up that I got put in charge of reassembling the entire front end of, getting, and of this engine and getting it timed correctly. That's a large responsibility and in the years that I've worked for this company, this is the biggest responsibility project that they've given me. It was a lot of fun. You see here some of the gears for the front of the engine and now you see where this turned into such a nightmare this stuff is all seized together you see the shaft goes inside the bushing goes inside the gear the shaft is supposed to come out of the bushing and have a bunch of free play it is seized to the shaft which is seized to the gear <clears throat> which means as everything is rotating and spinning the bushing was spinning inside of the gear. That is supposed to be solid. It's not supposed to do that. So that rotation caused a bunch of damage to the inside of the gear, which as we are now here trying to remove this, it turned into a nasty project, a couple of days worth of work trying to get it out. You can even see that it's bending the plate that we're using to remove everything. Got it all apart, had to send parts out for machining, get the inside of the block cleaned up. You can see here uh, the different pieces. There's quite a lot stacked together. It was a lot of fun to do this project. All the different parts. Jason is now putting the bolts back in the camshaft section. At this point, I believe we have everything turned and readjusted those three teeth so that it is now properly in time. All the bolts you can see that we need to install in the end there. My pink paint marker doing its work. Letting us know we've gotten everything tightened up over there. And then we have, I don't know, just showing you around the end of the generator here. The generator itself. That's awesome. This whole job the guys keep stealing my pink paint marker. Usually you would have red, yellow, blue is kind of useless. But pink is the best. You can see it through the most stuff. And I was telling them, yeah, I had the Seattle shop. Everybody was on pink markers. And now Jason was like, all right, I'm going to get the Florida shop on pink markers. They're way better. I was like, hell yeah, pink for the wood. i go down here and show you the cam shaft, cam shaft sections that I cleaned. And then clean the block so we can get ready to install them. We did a whole lot of work that I didn't, was not able to film in the meantime. Just getting that all pulled apart. Let's see if you can hear any of this. That was a giant mess. Right, the timing was off on this side. We took it apart. The camshaft completely fell out. We had to put the camshaft back. Just took lifting with two chain falls and then three two by fours out of the back of the place. Now we have to install a million nuts. I believe it was two hundred and forty something bolts that we have to install to bolt the camshaft sections all back together. Take a walk around the back of the generators. Check out this side over here. Everything's looking good. You can see we have a couple bolts here and there just to hold it in place. But you got to go back and put all the bolts in. There's a gear stacked on a gear, stacked on a gear, stacked on another gear. It never ends in there just to get this thing all in time. And then if you could see anything, oh, you can see zero with my yellow paint marks right there. Don't know why I wasn't using pink. 
cylinder heads on there looking good and then for some reason I just wanted to stand next to it I guess show you how big it is I'm talking about something but who knows what I'll just make goofy faces and make snow angels in the middle of the engine bay while I trip over stuff on the floor there's a nice control room here Super sweet background on the computer. Well, people have been asking me for a tour of this. Okay. Get to check out the machine shop. The artwork on the wall is fantastic. It's always nice to take a break in the air conditioning. I'm just gonna let you guys watch me struggle with my stinking pocket knife so that you can yell at the screen and be like, oh my god, why would you do it that way? There has to be a better way to do it. Why wouldn't he pick up insert shop tool here? Oh yeah. I completely forgot about the old trick. So I got frustrated, pulled out the angle grinder, which makes a giant mess of dust everywhere. Until one of the guys from the boat walked in and asked me, What the heck am I doing? And he showed me. Yeah, right? This gasket is so hard and thick, just beating it up with the hammer. Works well okay, enough. when we get out of the nice quiet hallway, the lock wire should be done on the bolts. And then I can apply these cover plates. And we're making good progress on the gear train. That's what I was working on with the hammer there. It's the cover plate for this area right here. See the lock wire, sure. Is, lock wire is good. It's the B bank. And now these are all the oil lines for all of those different gears. There's the oil manifold there in the center. And you have to grab the lines, figure out which one goes there. Hope that it didn't get tweaked in the meantime. Well, it's been sitting for weeks. Someone just leans on it or it sits in a bucket and gets something dropped on it and then the line gets tweaked, doesn't want to fit down the hole anymore. This is similar to doing diesel fuel injection lines if you've ever done that. Get it all set, on to the next one. And you have to memorize the pattern of which one starting from the bottom up so otherwise the wrench won't fit on that dis distribution manifold in the center there you can see uh, there's a bunch of pink lines or markings this one's bent so hitting the flat of the nut with the hammer which is just slightly bending the entire th shape of it Looks like it fits beautifully now. There we go. And grab the wrench, get it all tightened. All those gears that you see have the shafts running through them. And then these lines put oil down the center of the shaft. Just like the crankshaft on your car. Just to get oil through the center, through those oil galley holes. Get it all tightened and done hopefully i got some footage of us tightening with this crazy four to one torque multiplier put the ratchet on this side and this increases the torque times four so we put 210 newton meters on this side 
and it tightened the bolt to 840. Whoa, so the, the boat got turned 180. We tried to leave and we couldn't leave. This is the cable locker because this is a communications boat. They're just laying cable in the ocean. Look at that. That says 13 foot deep of spools of wire. You see how, see the black one? And then the, I can't even see the end of how big those spools are. There is so much cable on this thing. They said that it's um, enough cable. I think they said 15,000 miles of cable. Enough to go across the Atlantic there and back twice. That's insane. I've never seen a spool that big in my life. Wow. Yeah, now we're looking at a totally different side of the boat. Crazy. Huh. America, fuck yeah. Right on.